I say billionaire, what type of person do you think of? Do you think of the tech giant who managed to massively grow an industry? Do you think of the new age philanthropist with comically large checks with even larger sums of money on them? Or do you think of the modern day billionaire? The people like the Kardashians, the influencers, who popped up out of nowhere, but they snuck into an undeniable fame. But what do these billionaires really do for us? Are they hindering the economy, or are they helping our growth? And how much do their donations really help? First, I feel like I should establish the sheer size of the gap between a billionaire and a millionaire. A million seconds is 11.57 days. A billion seconds is 31.7 years. That amount of wealth is unimaginable to most people, and the real difference is hard to conceptualize. The billionaire's life is the life of a person who flies to the Bahamas on holidays monthly, who flies around the world in their private jet, and who eats caviar for breakfast. That is the extravagant life of the billionaire. So what are the economic effects of billionaires? There are conflicting theories on the true effect of billionaires on our economic growth, a measurement of the increase of goods and services made in the economy. These discrepancies are caused by the two groups that billionaires fall into. The first being the market-made billionaires, people like Mark Zuckerberg who earn their money through innovation. The second are the people who earn their money through their political connections. This group is hard to define, but the clear line is drawn where those connections were essential for the business to prosper. The first group brings the benefit that they have earned their money in growing a market. And in growing a market, they've created jobs. In addition to this, they have the money that's needed to finance the research and development that's needed to improve our lives. These market billionaires brought a new level of modernization to our lives. It was these billionaires who made things like the internet widely available. It was Larry Page and Sergey Brin who created Google, something that has become so implemented into our lives that Google has become a verb. Of course, these people didn't create the internet, but without their influence, we would not have such easy access to the outer world. Without these tech giants, we would not have this modern life. But what about the negative effects of billionaires and the wealth inequality they create? A, a, study, a study from the Journal of Comparative Economics found that with just a 3.75% increase in wealth inequality, there was a 0.5% decrease in GDP. That effect is massive, considering that the GDP only grows about 2% a year. This happens because of the expansion of billionaires into a market. When they gain a large enough percentage, they try and stop the competition from prospering. It's especially relevant in post-communist countries, where people have been able to buy massive percents of the market when they were privatized, but instead of keeping their promises, making it easier and more accessible for the many, they made it more expensive because they had full control of that product. That is the danger of these politically connected billionaires. Even without this ability to buy massive percents of the market, billionaires can still make it difficult for their competition to prosper. If they use lobbying to convince the government that harsher policies are needed on their competition or markets that might take away their power, then they have the ability to manipulate the market environment so that they are the only ones to succeed. This again leads to higher prices and makes it worse for the many. The Journal of Comparative Economics clearly states that when wealth and power concentrate within a nation, they have the ability to manipulate policy in a way that hurts the broader interest. That is the negative effect of these billionaires. But what about the people? How could this be visibly affecting their lives? When wealth inequality increases within a nation, the lower classes are starved of their opportunity to grow and gain wealth. This is because of the expansion of billionaire-led businesses. While it does create jobs, these jobs are much lower paid and have much lower responsibility than what they could have been without these billionaires' influences. This means that they don't have the ability to gather collateral that's needed to take out loans and start a business, or pay for the training and education that's needed to move up in the job ladder. 
This just means the rich get richer while the poor stay poor. French economist Thomas Piketty thinks that it's a wishful lie that billionaires bring growth and jobs to a nation that will truly benefit the many. And there is evidence to back this up. Between 1990, no, 1950 and 1990, income growth in America was 2.2%. But after 1990, when there were six times the amount of billionaires, income growth halved to just 1.1%. The orange line shows where incomes could have been without if this growth trend had continued. But you can see the blue line is very different. And it's that difference that is hindering the people. But what do billionaires do to even out this inequality? The ultra-rich have always been known for their philanthropy, using their advantaged position to help others. But in recent years, they have had to be more aware of the donations they give out with the internet making it easier than ever for these donations to reflect back on them. This accountability creates a new breed of billionaire who must be aware of where every pound of their donation goes to, no longer just donating to larger charities that they know will do good. They are forced to hand-pick charities they can use to support causes and tell their stories. This shift towards smaller and less established charities makes philanthropy become more entrepreneurial, where a small percentage of a billionaire's wealth is enough to bring one of those small charities into a more established one, making every donation have a more influential effect, making every donation reflect back on them. After the financial crisis of 2008, even the larger charities had to change their methods. They could no longer rely on the basic gala in order to get the donations they needed. This was because of a tightening of spending from the ultra-rich. While the crisis may have not visibly affected their lives, they were forced to reduce non-essential spending, and that included donations. These charities could not risk losing out on an invested partnership, so they created programs that made donations and philanthropy itself become a more long-going process. Things like membership schemes were created to keep a constant flow of money into these charities so that they could be kept alive. This again added to the, to the responsibility of choosing charities to commit to. It's becoming more and more clear that the public donations that celebrities and philanthropists make are being influenced by the popular conscience. That the causes of, that people on social media are passionate about are the causes that are gaining these donations. A good example of this are the fires in Australia. Once the movement gained public traction, we saw many celebrities pledging donations or urging their followers to donate. Kylie Jenner donated 1 million, 0.001% of her wealth to the Australia Wildfire Fund, something that was created by Leonardo DiCaprio in order to make distributing these donations easier. So has this responsibility made donations go to a more, best, uh, more useful place? I would say that yes, it has. Now, instead of just donating to the largest charity that might be easiest for them, philanthropists are, for, are forced to truly think out their donations so that every pound of that donation goes to a place that they think needs it. And while that not, might not be considered the most important place, it is a place that will create change that these billionaires support, shaping the world into their view. However, with these more personal donations, issues from further afield are more likely to be ignored unless they get the traction that's on the internet. So while they may be helping decrease inequality within their country and others, they are increasing the gap between their country and others, but helping inequality within their own. So, are billionaires good or bad for us? Your view on billionaires depends on your perspective. If you are the head of a large charity, then billionaires are good for you. They give the donations that keep your charity alive, and you can see the positive effects of their money. But if you are a single parent, then you may be angry about their walls lined of Gucci while you are struggling to provide angry about their effortlessly extravagant life while you have to work hard to succeed. Even if you consider their philanthropy, is giving away 0.001% of your wealth enough 
when you could easily afford more? To me, the answer is no. Even if you consider the positive effects that many billionaires do bring, you cannot ignore the fact that they would rather hoard their wealth and become rich than give it to the people who truly need it. To me, that makes them bad. Billionaires are bad for us, and it is time we do something about it.